Hi, this is Daniel DeTuro. Are legumes healthy or toxic carbs? In this video, I'll share what are legumes, legume health benefits and risks, nutrition value versus beef, heme versus non-heme iron, legume fiber, complete versus incomplete protein, legumes, gas, and lectins, and canned versus dried legumes. First, what are legumes? Legume is the scientific name for edible beans, peas, and lentils. Legumes grow on vines and shrubs. They can include the pod, like green beans and snow peas, or only the edible seeds. Peanuts are a legume that grows under instead of above ground. Some English-speaking countries use pulses instead of beans or legume. Like most foods, legumes have health benefits and risks. A major health risk is a severe and sometimes fatal allergic reaction to proteins in peanuts. Some people feel peanut allergies is reason enough to ban all legumes. While some people allergic to peanuts may also be allergic to tree nuts, they usually are not allergic to other legumes. Another health risk is lectins that I will discuss later in this video. Legumes have many health benefits. They're high in fiber. They're a low glycemic index carbohydrate, a good source of protein, high in B vitamins, good source of folate, have antioxidant polyphenols, they're low in saturated fat, and high in iron, calcium, potassium, phosphorus, and magnesium. Beef is a source of complete protein, iron, zinc, and B12. Beef and other red meats are promoted as excellent foods for active people. So how does beef compare to legumes? Beef has no carbohydrates and therefore no fiber. 50 grams of dried legumes, about one serving, can have as much as 15 grams of fiber. 50 grams of legumes also have more protein than 50 grams of ground beef. While ground beef has less calories in this comparison, the typical serving size is usually much greater than 50 grams. Since beef and other meats have zero carbohydrates, they also have zero fiber, starch, and sugar. Legumes are high in fiber and low in natural sugars. Up to 95% of a legume's carbohydrates are fiber and starch. Legume calories come from protein and carbohydrates, meat calories from fat and protein. 50 grams of dried legumes also have more iron, more calcium, and more potassium than 50 grams of ground beef. Whereas legumes are low in vitamin B12, beef and other animal protein is high in B12. There are two types of dietary iron, heme and non-heme. Meat, seafood, and poultry provide heme iron. Plant foods and fortified foods provide non-heme iron. Heme iron is absorbed more readily than non-heme iron. Total iron in the human body is about 3 to 4 grams. The U.S. recommended dietary allowance for iron is 8 milligrams for adult men and 18 milligrams for premenopausal women eating a diet of animal and plant foods. The daily requirement is higher for vegetarians, 14 milligrams for adult men and 32 milligrams for premenopausal women. One milligram equals one one thousandth of a gram. Vegetarians need more iron because less non-heme iron is absorbed 
Compared to heme iron, dietary iron absorption rate or bioavailability is about 15% for a mixed diet of animal and plant foods and about 8% for a vegetarian diet. The US RDA for iron is so small that vegetarians eating 50 grams of dried beans providing 2 grams of non-heme iron at 8% absorption equals 16 milligrams or 114% of the RDA for men and 50% of the RDA for women. Vitamin C and animal foods increases iron absorption, while phytate and some polyphenols in plant foods decreases absorption. Most people obtain enough iron by eating a diet providing a wide variety of foods. A major health benefit of legumes is dietary fiber. While there's no RDA for fiber, U.S. dietary guidelines recommend 25 grams daily for adult women and 38 grams for adult men. Many Americans average about 15 grams of fiber daily. The reason is a diet high in low fiber, highly processed prepared foods. Dietary fiber, also known as roughage, comes from plant foods. Popular American fad diets encourage eating low-fiber, high-fat and protein foods, even though fiber's health benefits were known over 100 years ago. Dietary fiber helps maintain regularity, reduces the risk of hemorrhoids and diverticulitis, it also reduces the risk of colorectal cancer, lowers blood cholesterol, slows sugar absorption, helps you feel full longer, and reduces the risk for cardiovascular disease. A balanced diet of animal and plant foods can easily supply 25 to 50 milligrams of dietary fiber daily. A serving of lentil soup containing 50 grams of dried lentils supplies 15 to 18 grams of fiber. That's 60% of the daily fiber recommended for women and 40% for men. You get about 15 grams of fiber for about 220 calories and 13 grams of protein. This cheeseburger and fried potatoes supplies 38 grams of protein, but only has 9 grams of fiber and 1,240 calories. This serving of lentil soup has 15 calories per gram of fiber, compared to 138 calories per gram for the cheeseburger and fried potatoes. Which food do you believe is more likely to contribute to weight gain, increase risk of type 2 diabetes and heart disease? For decades, eggs, meat, and other animal protein were classified as complete versus incomplete plant protein. Complete meant it provided all nine essential amino acids. Essential means your diet must provide these nine amino acids because your body can't make them. In reality, both animal and plant protein are complete. The difference is the amount of essential amino acids. While animal protein provides more essential amino acids than plant protein, a balanced diet of grains and legumes provides high level of all nine essential amino acids. Peanut butter and celery does not provide the level of essential amino acids compared to eating a peanut butter sandwich combining essential amino acids from legumes and grains. While legumes are good low-calorie, high-protein foods, Grains, preferably whole grains, are necessary to obtain adequate essential amino acids. Legumes have an indigestible oligosaccharide that becomes food for gut bacteria. 
gas produced from undigested oligosaccharides can cause bloating and abdominal discomfort. Another concern is lectins, especially in kidney beans. Lectins are proteins protecting plants from insects and can be toxic when consumed in high levels. Dried kidney beans are high in lectins toxic to humans, but most people don't eat dried kidney beans. Preparation, like overnight soaking in cold water and cooking, reduces oligosaccharides and inactivates lectins. Lectin fears are based on animal studies. There are no proven health risks from eating cooked legumes. Rinsing canned beans reduces sodium, gas-producing compounds, and lectins that leached into the liquid. Canned legumes are convenient and relatively affordable. A 15-ounce can of organic legumes costs as little as $1. Many non-organic brands retail for less than $1. Organic canned legumes have no chemical additives. Most organic legumes are low sodium, providing 140 milligrams or less per serving. By comparison, dried legumes are almost sodium free. While non-organic canned legumes can be very high in sodium, Fortunately, legumes are high in potassium. Rinsing canned legumes reduces sodium about 40%. Canned legumes are fully cooked and ready to use in cold and hot recipes. In addition to salt, non-organic canned legumes can have added sugar and chemical additives. This brand has added sugar, the firming agent calcium chloride, and disodium EDTA for color retention. Organic canned legumes should have no chemical additives. While organic legumes may have no chemical additives, they can come in cans lined with BPA or BPS. These chemicals can leach into the contents over time. Dried legumes have no added salt, sugar, or chemical additives. They also have no BPA or BPS. And organic dried legumes should be grown without chemical fertilizers and pesticides. A 15 ounce can of legumes drained equals about one and a half cups cooked. One pound dried equals about six cups cooked. About 5 ounces dried equals one 15 ounce canned. And dried legumes can cost up to 80% less than canned. A disadvantage of dried versus canned for most people is their long cooking times. With the exception of lentils, cooking dried legumes can take between one to two hours. And cooking times vary based on type, age, and quality. Pressure cooking dramatically decreases cooking times, but has some disadvantages that I'll discuss in next week's video. Please leave a comment if you have any questions about this video. Thank you for watching and healthy eating.